What's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Brandon. We've got a real quick project today. I've been doing a lot of work over on my other channel, Motivated, and I'll have a link to that. And if you follow me on social media, you'll also know that we had some sewer problems. It's kind of been a lot of stuff going on, so stick around. Welcome back guys. Let me show you what we're going to be working on today. With the high prices of gasoline right now, guys, I've actually taken my wife's dirt bike and I've converted it over, making it street legal. That's not what this video is about. I've actually taken all my uh, motorcycle content off this channel because I know you guys just like to see welding and fabrication. So today we have a fabrication project. What I need to do is, you can see I've got a headlight mount here. Well, I need to mount a speedometer somehow on this motorcycle and I think what I'm going to do is uh, take some brackets and come off to this and I've got some aluminum that I think I'm going to fabricate up and make a mount for the speedometer and then I got to fix these pegs now the original ones that were on the bike were all bent up so I just ordered these these are fairly inexpensive through Amazon but look how that downhill see how the pegs got like a downhill angle this one over here is really bad you can see how they work they're made to flip up so for this to be right it really needs to go like up like that and this side's really bad this one's got to go up quite a bit too so we're gonna have some aluminum welding these are aluminum I think what I'm gonna do is take off the pegs then build up the back side like right up under there where that touches then I can get these nice and straight how they should be instead of having them down like that like they shouldn't be but the first thing I want to do is get started on that bracket start by loosening up the existing lock nut that's on here I'm gonna put this on like this so the bolt isn't quite long enough using that lock washer so what I'll do is I'll put some thread locker on it and use the flat washer so I was able to get that side let me go move over to the other side and we'll do that one and what I'll do after we get these all on, guys, I will take that piece of aluminum. And we'll have to like cut it to length and put some holes in it and drill it and then do some fasteners and stuff. All right, let's see what we got for a measurement here. Six and seven eighths. So now we'll take the six and seven eighths measurement that we need, and it looks to be right about what 205 millimeters so six and seven eighths appears to be right around that measurement then I'll grab a nice straight edge and we will just put a nice scribe line on that that I can cut by now you don't want to use like a hard rock disc a abrasive disc to grind aluminum because what will happen is is that all the chunks of aluminum will embed into the grinding wheel and it can actually explode. So what I like to use is a flap disc. You can see that that does just a real good job, guys, uh, controlling it. And that's the key is having control on your tool so it does exactly what you want. So this is the factory cut edge, the way I picked it up. Right there, you can see that's not overly clean, but the edge that we did, much, much better looking. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ease the edges by rounding the corners just a little bit uh, to make it look a little bit better. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to shape that again with the flap wheel. And obviously, I'm not wearing a glove, guys. If you are not comfortable with the tools that you're using, I would recommend that you wear a glove. I am trying to get real good control on this piece and at the expense kind of to my safety. So I'm not too concerned about it. Yeah, I like that. I think that looks really good, guys. And now we just got to put some holes in it. So to mark this, guys, what I've done is I just put it underneath the bracket so that way I can mark out exactly where these holes go. Uh, do this little number there mark out this side over here now we can go center punch it and drill it and a good way to center punch it is just use a spring-loaded punch hopefully 
There, nice. There. Now I'll mount it up in my drill vise. That way it's not going to flop all around while I'm drilling it. And I'm just going to drill a quarter inch hole in it. Now I'll just swap it around, do the same thing to the other side. Then if you don't have a lot to do, you can actually use like a countersink tool to actually chamfer the hole to just give it a nice finished look. You can just do it by hand. You don't need to chuck it up in a drill. You can see how it's got a little, I don't know if you can see it there or not, it's got a little burr on the edge of this. All you gotta do is just stick it in there, spin it around a couple times. Yeah, it took great care of it. Now it's got a nice finished hole around there. Now I'll just lightly bolt it in, make sure that everything's gonna fit. It should look pretty clean. Oh yeah, that's gonna look real clean. And we don't have to worry about any rust because that's an aluminum plate and the fasteners are all stainless steel. There we go. Now I just gotta wait for the speedometer to get here, pop a couple holes in it, and then we'll be able to like tip this back at any angle we want. Should work really well. Well, unfortunately guys, they can't all be a high speed uh, fabrication and welding video or even a build video, which I know that you guys really enjoy build videos. I'm a one man show, so it doesn't take much to really bury me in work. And outside of that, I'm also a dad, a grandfather, and I have responsibilities I gotta take care of around my house. And if you guys saw in like last week's posting on Facebook, I posted that we had like a sewer line back up. They ended up digging up our entire yard. It was a mess. We had trees taken down. There's just a lot going on outside of actually the, the videos. But I will say we've got a lot of stuff coming up and I've got more videos coming. We try to do videos every single Friday. With that said, guys, I try to provide some value to you guys and show you different ways of doing stuff and just ways of going about something maybe in a different way so that maybe you think, wow, that's kind of different or that's kind of neat or I never thought of that. That's the idea behind a lot of these videos, guys, just to expand your mind, show you some different tools to have in your toolbox, kind of like deburring that hole around that aluminum that I showed you and just using that hand countersink that just to break that edge around that hole to make it look finished. So with that said, guys, let's get back to it. All right, let's get these pegs off. You can see right here, guys, this is where we're going to build up all in this area right here. First thing I'm going to do, guys, is get this thing fixtured up a little bit so I can just have it be in place and not be moving all around on me. There. Now that'll give me a nice surface. I can grind on this, move it around however I need it, right in position. The first things we got to do is I got to get this area all cleaned up, which means we got to get this paint or whatever this is on the back side, we got to get it off. It's important when you weld in aluminum to have it really clean. So you want to wipe it down with acetone, that'll get out any grease and grime and dirt. Uh, it's got to be clean. and. When you're done with your acetone, get it out of your work area. Put, put it somewhere where it's not going to combust or a sparkle hit it. And I also have a dedicated uh, can, metal can, that I put all my acetone and grease and gas soaked rags into. That way it seals it out, it doesn't get oxygen, and it can't just combust or you know burn up if a spark gets in it. For this, guys, we're going to be using my Yes Welder MIG 250 Pro. Now, this is an awesome machine because it will MIG weld aluminum wire without a spool gun, which is super impressive. I've got a bunch of videos of testing this out on all different processes and all different wires. If you want to check it out, I'll have a link up above. But I just want to kind of get you up to speed real quick about what we're doing here and what we've got for wire. I'm using uh, Fronius Wire 5356 and it's 3 64ths or 1.2 millimeter, which is also the same as 45 thousandths. I've gone over in past videos on how to set this up, how to set your tension, how to set your drive rolls, what drive rolls to use. This is just an awesome, capable welder for the money. I just keep it all set up for this, guys. I don't do aluminum a whole bunch, but when I do, it's super handy to have. And here's just a few test pieces, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. We're gonna get this set up. 
I'm going to run a couple beads before I end up doing it onto my part and uh, just make sure I got my settings all good and then we'll go from there. With aluminum you want to be using a hundred percent argon so we're going to turn this on slowly, crack it, there we go, and you turn it on all the way with non-flammable gases, that's how they seal. I just turned on the machine, we'll pull the trigger, and we'll adjust our gas flow. We'll go right about 30 CFH, there we go, right there. Oh, and I mentioned earlier that you don't have to run a spool gun with this. That's what the, is the great benefit by it. But if you did want to run a spool gun, there it is right there. You just switch the switch to up and you can run a spool gun. It's that simple. But I haven't found that I needed it. This is a very handy, capable welder. Comes with uh, two different liners. One to run specifically aluminum. And I talked to you about how to set that liner up in one of those videos. And it also comes with a regular standard liner, so you can run either flex core or solid wire. The reason I have the different liner, it's called a graphene liner, is that it's very slippery inside and it feeds aluminum really well. But if you use that same liner to run like flex core or solid wire, it would just tear it up too quickly. Just the wire is too hard, aluminum soft, so it's easy on the liner. All right guys, let's get going. We're at 16.5 volts and we're at 11 inches per minute on the wire feed. We'll give it a try. We'll go up or down depending on what we need to do. But I'm going to put a little bead somewhere in here just to get an idea. I haven't even cleaned this, but just to get an idea of how it's going to run because I don't want to go blowing that apart or have it too cold, one of the two. So we'll pat a little quick bead and see how it goes. I, I want to tell you that you guys should be wearing a respirator when you do this. Uh, I'm not wearing one right now simply just because I'm going to be talking back and forth, but um, if I was going to be doing this for a little bit longer, I would be wearing a respirator because this isn't overly clean. It does produce uh, kind of like a cloud. You'll see. That's hot. So let me uh, reduce this down a little bit. Oh yeah, that's it right there. That's the sweet spot. You can actually hear it. When you weld an aluminum, guys, you don't want it to sound like your typical MIG. It almost makes like a hissing sound, like a ch And you can hear that when I was doing that arc. As with a typical MIG, it sounds like frying bacon. When you do an aluminum, it does not sound like that at all. And when you do an aluminum, you want to make sure that you're pushing the MIG wire. All right, I think we're good. Let's get on to our piece and start doing it. Yeah, we'll give that a try, see how that works. I'm gonna flatten it down, and then we'll give it a try. Yeah, I've got it ground down a little bit, and just to give a rough idea of how that's gonna work. So, let's stick it on the bike and see. Hopefully, it's more than what we need, rather than less. Oh yeah, it is. Perfect. Yeah, so we just got to grind a little bit more off that, guys. Can you see that, guys, how it's now uphill on the right-hand side? So we just got to grind a little bit more off that pad to get it completely flat. You can actually see the brake lever in front of it, how that is parallel. We just need to make the foot peg parallel to that, basically, to give you an idea, to give you a visual look to it. I'll take this off. We will grind it a little bit more on that pad and try it again. We'll have to sneak up on it real slow. There we go guys, that's it. This thing is awesome. And I even touched it up with a little bit of black permanent marker guys. So it has that like ghetto look to it. I want it looking good. Stick that in there like that. Come on. Get the pin through. Give her a little tap. There we go. Look at that, guys. Nice. Put the cotter pin through it, and we will be in business. This one is bad, guys, on the left side of the bike. Compa look at it compared to that shifter. 
how much downhill that is. That's got to be built up quite a bit. You know, that's the downfall sometimes when you buy these cost-effective imported things that, you know, needs to have works. Nice to have, you know, the oversized peg, but it's got to go like that. It's got to come up a lot. So we can build that up. We'll do it. Now that thing now fits perfect guys. I actually built that up quite a bit. You can see how it used to kind of just go straight across. Now it's kind of up quite a bit in the air, but that thing fits absolutely perfect. Let me show you another quick ghetto fix. Although this won't rust, maybe you just want it black. Uh, and I got a great ghetto fix for that. Let me show you. You see here right in the back corner of my toolbox, I've got some things hidden. Uh, what you want to do is grab your wife's fingernail polish and uh, you can use that as touch-up paint. Works really good. Works good on motorcycle frames. Works awesome. Like the red works good on like needles and indicators if you're trying to restore something and it has like a little red line on it. Uh, I use this on my TRX build. Uh, it just works really good. So yeah, grab grab the good stuff too. You don't want the cheap stuff. And if you get caught doing these things, guys, you're on your own. Don't be telling her that I put you up to it. I got enough problems on my own without being in hot water with, with your wife or girlfriend. So check this out. This just works really, really good, guys. It goes on nice, lays out flat. You figure it has to lay out flat if women are using it for their fingernails, right? They want it to, to look good and they can't have it all bubbly. All right, and there it is, guys, all touched up, all looking good. Um, don't leave that polish laying out or you're going to get in trouble. So just make sure you hide it. Don't tell her. While you're at it, you might as well grab a couple nice uh, kitchen towels or something and bring those into the workshop because you might have to wipe up some stuff. The good towels work really good, not the junk ones that she gives you when they're all used up. You don't want those. Get the new ones. And you definitely don't want to be using, uh, you know, an old pair of underwear or something like that is a uh, is a shop rag you know we're, this is a respectable uh, outfit there we go that was slick there now look at it guys now you can compare it to the shifter how level and flat that is perfectly straight across there we go and let me give you some real good close-ups that you can't even tell that that was fixed and that's the idea you know you don't want someone looking at it saying oh wow that was all jacked up you know yeah it's just like factory. And that's all there is to it, guys. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. New videos every Friday. If you're wondering what I'm working on before it makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram. I'll have links down below. If you're wondering about any of the tools that you see me using, I'll have links down below as well. And a lot of them have exclusive promo codes to this channel so you can get a little bit off, including this welder. Until next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care, stay safe. Please like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next week. Bye. Come, come.